What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Railroads Online. Before we get started in game today, we're here at the uh, Mini Zwerg map. And before we actually get to this point, I need to talk about a couple of updates. So uh, we did get a couple of updates, and part of the update uh, was this spreadsheet. This is several iterations of the spreadsheet that I can find on Discord, and I'll put a link in the description below, so please head on over there, check it out. It's in the pinned uh, area. Took a little bit of finding for me. I'm not a huge Discord uh, user, so let's see. We got over here, we have our grade down this table here, and we're gonna focus on this area right here really quick. Uh, and we have, so we have our grade zero through 10. We have our locomotives along the top here. And we can see here that the maximum load of maximum load in pounds a locomotive can pull per grade, and this is theoretical on a straight track. Now they make mention several times that this is like back of the napkin kind of math, where it is not a hundred percent because rolling resistance, I believe, is not calculated into this, and neither is the curve. So if you got a curve in your track at all, it's going to limit how much this is uh, able to pull your your locomotive is able to pull so as you can see here too that they rebalance these the climax is actually the strongest locomotive we have in game and in a little bit we'll see testing this and the climax actually does outperform the heisler climax can pull 4.3 million pounds while while the heisler can only pull 3.2 million and of course, the C70 Beast can pull 3.8 million. So the really cool thing about this spreadsheet here is this little calculator right here, and we can actually punch in numbers. What's missing here though, and I don't quite understand why, is the beams. And I'm guessing there's a lot of stuff missing here because we have it all listed down here. This is all the materials in game, but up here we don't have it. So, but looking at some of the weights, I uh, was just kind of looking around. Let's see, beams are on T2 cars. We can fit three of them per car. Uh, that's what it is fully loaded. Uh, and individual weights, our car weight, how much the T2 car weighs, and that is the flat state cars, if you didn't know, our 200 series uh, T2 cars. And so this is our loaded weight and our total weight. So you can see that it's really close to lumber, which is up above it. And it's only off by, you know, that much. It's it's not much. So uh, we're going to be a really conservative when using this tool. Uh, we're going to be, you know, if it says we can pull nine cars like we have it set up now, uh, then we're only going to probably be able to do eight or maybe even seven. Um, so, but we can't actually pull this. So the way we use this, we look at our engine key and we have the C70, that's number one. So we put in engine number one here. And what grade can we do? And we got it on a 6% grade, uh, which is the maximum on our map. So we come up here and we got number of cars. We have nine of these T2 cars loaded down with lumber and we can't pull it, false. So what can we pull? Let's take a look. So can we pull Two cars. Yes, we can pull two cars with the C70 up a 6%. How about four cars? Yep, we can do four cars. How about six? No, we can't do six. Can we do five? No, we can't do six. We can only do four cars up a 6% incline on a straight track with no rolling resistance. <laughs> so, um, close that out of the way so but we we only have a, a short area of six percent and we're going to be leveling off some of our grades so let's go down here to three percent now this changes everything can we do eight cars yes can we do our nine cars yes how about our 12 cars yes we could do 12 cars up a three percent fully loaded uh, I believe we can actually even go a little higher. Can we go a little higher? Let's try 13. No, we can't do 13. So 12 is going to be our absolute max. Again, that's on a straight track. So there's a lot of information you can see here. 
We got some curve stuff here and some tested values. Uh, sheet one just got a bunch of different stuff here. Uh, you can take a look at uh, load all cars evenly. I, if you have 12, 12 steel pipe, put six on one car and six on the other. Um, so I uh, just trying to say there, you know, make sure that you're, uh, you don't put one, a lot of weight on one car and, and no weight on the other kind of a thing, which we've talked about a little bit in the past. So this is a really cool tool that I will be referencing and using. I hope they keep it updated. I'll check back often and look for updates to this as they actually fix some of the uh, weights and abilities of the uh, locomotives and uh, the density of you know the different things which they have done here recently. So let's head back over to the map and take a look at what's going on over there. We need to take a look at redoing all this track and while we're here, I'm going to redo this line like I mentioned in a, in a previous video. I'm going to kind of curve it around here and then we'll come down this side of this hill and kind of hook it in this way. And I did do some testing and I'll put some highlights in uh, where I actually did buy the Climax and the Heisler. And I came down here with this train where Beast is at and I parked Beast off to the side. I took the coal cars off and I tried using the Climax. Now the Climax did pretty well. It climbed up this, it went around this nice steep uh, bridge here that's way too steep. And it climbed up this five and then the six. It went slow, but it pulled it. We got up here to this flat track and we went around this corner, but I started slowing down uh, because that corner is pretty steep. And I slowed down too much and we actually derailed the we actually derailed the caboose. So I continued on without the caboose, just seeing if I could do it. And I did make it all the way to the iron ore mine. So with that being said, you know, the Climax did a phenomenal job and it will do a phenomenal job. It's the strongest uh, attractive effort wise locomotive we have in game now. Uh, the Heisler used to be king, not so much anymore. The Heisler made it to about here and it couldn't do it. So the Heisler failed. I tried multiple ways, multiple times with using sand and all sorts of things. The only one that got up there was the Climax. So this route here, we can forego redoing it. It does have some steepness in it, but this could be a downhill track only. You know, we can come up this way and that's what I've been doing before this update. I was bringing wood products this way and getting the iron ore and going out this way. Now, getting the iron ore cars empty, I might be able to pull this and go this way and then come up this way to get their iron ore. But then we'll have to turn around and that's probably when I'm gonna put in that little uh, turntable uh, siding here. So I can turn around the train and we'd probably just do like four or five cars. I don't know yet, I'll run the calculator and then go downhill, but we have to climb these grades empty and I have to make sure that whatever locomotive we use can pull as many cars as we can up this grade. I really don't want to do this grade if I don't have to, uh, but I will for sure if we, if we need to. What I do need to focus on is this route here coming off of this and I'm thinking about maybe hooking it coming along here a little closer and start to climb back here and we'll have a bridge over some flat ground which I don't like but we'll get up here on the side of this hill at a nice 2% or 3% and just kind of keep it that way all the way on here. Kind of smooth this out like that. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. We'll see when we get there. Uh, we'll redo this one line here. It doesn't need it. It's only it's 3% pretty much all the way. We got a little 4% right there. The big one though is this one here. So we're going to come off this one. We're probably going to come out a little further and start climbing and turning in this bowl right here and, and climb a little gentler, more gently and get up here. And this bridge, I'm thinking about curving it. So it'll look kind of like this. You can just follow the mouse uh, and that way it'll make this curve not so sharp. So I, that was a problem. Now, that's may not going to fix everything because if you look right here, we got some five and six percents and that's going to be a problem. This is that uh, calamity bridge 
and we got some that's six percent like almost all the way and it curves so actually let's go back to our six percent here so let's say we, we get the the climax which is number six and we'll zero this out and we'll need the hopper uh, grade six percent so how many of these can it pull up a six percent now keep in mind this is on straight track so can we do two yep we do four yep six yep how about ten can we do ten yes we can do ten okay so this is promising um but i don't want to push it that much and let's go back to here at some point in the future i do know that we need to get down all the way down here to the coal mine that's right here and i'd like to use the c70 for that the beast for that and it's probably gonna Y like over here or maybe here and follow the river is what i'm guessing so we need to be able to get this up there whatever i don't i, I don't even know what the coal mine needs for cars but it's got to be able to pull up this grade so we're going to leave that for now but i'm going to go ahead and fix this bridge and fix this route here i'm going to fix this route and bring it down closer again the reason why i want to do that is because i want to make a big shunt yard in here i think that'd be super cool and this section of track right here is just right in the way and i really need to fix this here so so let's hop in game and take a look at what we did for testing here not that long ago show you kind of what i came up with and i'll probably get some of this track done maybe off camera maybe i'll hyperlapse it kind of a thing and just kind of speed things up uh that way i don't bore you guys to death with uh redoing and doing uh track over and over and over again so all right let's see these uh these tests that we did i do apologize i mentioned when we were looking at the spreadsheet and the map that there was some updates and I like to talk about the updates right at the beginning and I kind of neglected to do that. So before we get into the highlights of testing the Climax and the uh, Heisler, let's talk about these updates really quick. So this is the new build for the beta uh, 220120 and the first thing that they did was they fixed the wheel rotation speed for low frame rates and I actually learned about that whole uh, frame rate thing. The way it worked before is that if you were pumping out really good frame rates, you were actually being penalized uh, because it, the, the performance of the locomotive was matched to the frame rate. So if you had really poor frame rate, it actually went a little easier on you and gave you a boost. Whereas you had really good frame rates, uh, it was more realistic. Well, they just simply turned that up to 100 and it's more realistic now. It's not tied to the frame rate at all. So for low frame rates though they sped up or they fixed the rotation speed uh for those lay, uh, low frame rates so the, the wheels look like they're spinning correctly now uh they fixed the water consumption the water in the boiler is only consumed if the water temperature is greater or equal to 100 degrees c and that's 212 degrees fahrenheit which is boiling and they have a note on here and this is where i had some problem with uh initially and it started to make sense uh, the more I played with it, the more I, I watched it uh, with these water towers when you're filling your tender. And it, their note says, the UI readout on the water glass only shows the water of the boiler. If you want to know the water level of your tank or tender, you have to visually inspect the water level in the tank and tender. And I'll do that coming up here when we look at the highlights. I'll be sure to throw a clip in there of me actually discovering this and realizing that the water level uh, when you enter the vehicle that it shows there is actually for the uh, boiler not what's in the tender so because there was so much confusion though they did add a particle effect for the tender tank if the tender tank is being filled and has reached its maximum water capacity a water par particle effect will appear and we're going to head over to the smelter here in just a second we'll we'll discover this one real quick i'll, I'll run over there and uh uh, we'll try filling up beast and I want to see that particle filter. I haven't seen it yet. So, uh, let's see what else did they do? 
they corrected the cordwood freight density from 1,000 uh, kilograms per meter, I guess that's to the third, uh, to 500 kilograms per meter cubed. Oh, that's cubed. Okay, uh, per item. So uh, I guess they they had an issue with the cordwood freight density and it was too heavy, so they, they lowered that down. So... Uh, player progress is now saved via Steam ID and not via Steam username. Really? Let's check that out really quick. Huh. Okay. That must not be in-game. I'm not sure exactly what they're talking about. Um, granted, I'm not too horribly familiar with saving games in Steam, so maybe that's where it's at. It's saved in Steam somewhere, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, player progress is now tracked on the server when player stats change. Added to save game unique ID to save game data. When save when saving a new game, a unique save game ID is created once. So, interesting. So my save game files, again, are just the date and the time. So, maybe that's something that can be changed in the options. I'll, I'll explore. I'll play around that later or leave a comment if you know uh, if you if you want to all right so then they came out with a new one, another update the very next day uh, because again this is beta and we are still you know finding bugs and they're trying to fix bugs as fast as they can and the developers are doing an excellent job and I, I really do appreciate it uh, so this is the new build 2201-21 beta uh, locomotives will spawn in with a closed regulator I didn't notice that before, and it could have been just a, a glitch from that second update uh, in the beta that the you, the regulators would spawn in open. Um, I didn't notice that. So they adjusted specific rail mass to 900 kilograms per item. Uh, we haven't played around with rails at all yet. So uh, the unique save game ID is now added for every save. Again, more of that save game stuff I don't know anything about. And they added the player name array to a save file. So, <laughs> once again, I'm, I'm not sure what they're talking about. Maybe that's in the uh, file itself, the, the save game file. So I'm going to head over to the smelter really quick, and we're going to check out that uh, water particulate filter. And then we'll get to the highlights of the testing. I do apologize. We will get there, I promise. So I'm going to head that way, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, just like that, we're down here at the smelter. You can see behind me here. And this is actually a save game file. We're staring at my testing train that I set up to head on up Derail Hill and Calamity Bridge and go that way. These are the coal cars I just kind of set off on this loop. And one reason why I need a little shunt yard down here is so I can store some train cars down here. Um, and I don't have the beast hooked up yet. I got him off to the side too because again I was using the Heisler or the Climax in testing and I would just come down here, hook up to the train and, and attempt to pull it, which you'll see here in just a little bit. Uh, that was a couple days ago and I actually got all that uh, video footage ready to be edited when the new update started dropping and I actually saw a video that Khan did with uh, one of the developers, Heiss and on Heiss's world, and he explained a lot of this in that video. I will link to that video in the description below, as well as the Discord. Uh, I strongly recommend if you play this game, go there and get that spreadsheet. Uh, that's where it's found, and it is an awesome uh, resource so far. Uh, so we're gonna go test out this water particle thing. Uh, first, we have to make sure we got some fire, which I guarantee this is cold. There we go. So I know we got plenty of water in it, at least we should. Let's take a look. So there's the water level. I was just crouching there trying to see the where the top of the water was. And while that's building a little bit of steam, I'll go over here and flick some switches. All right, we got plenty enough steam. I think now we're sitting here, and this is that sight glass I was talking about. Uh, if it's at 90% or or less than 90%, it's going to be transferring water from the tender into the boiler. And that water level is right there. So let's uh, zoom out here and get this tender 
underneath that water tower that's now down over here. So we're going to go break off, reverse or forward, give it some regulator. All the switches should be set. We don't need to be going super fast. Uh, that front truck being off of there like that is kind of kind of a little bit scary. So yeah, the heist, the uh, developer, I learned that he actually uh, operates a uh, Class 70 locomotive just like this in real life. Which is one reason why the physics and the detail and everything are so awesome in this game. Uh, he's one of, the, one of the developers and he's also the one that does the music for the game, the music that you're hearing now. So that's pretty cool. I, I find that uh, very interesting. And uh, though I don't have any experience on an actual steam locomotive, I do have experience with steam itself. And it is a, a great thing. So we'll get underneath this water tower here and we'll start filling this tender up just to see this particle effect. Probably got to move forward a little bit more. All right, there's probably good. Now I placed this tower here not knowing exactly uh, how far away I need to be. So I might need to destroy this. is my first time getting water out of it. Alright, just like that. Hopefully we're taking water. It seems to be going in there. I want to see this one is actually over full. Just like that, we are over full. That is super cool. Uh, the water spilling out over the top. Is it coming down on the ground? No, it's just on the top up here. So that means that we are full. Go ahead and lift that up. That is super cool. It could stop overfilling now at any time. Let's see if we close the lid. Yeah, all right. Wow, that is neat. What does this say now? Obviously this is the boiler level, so um, that is super cool. So that is a big help. That does hopefully make a lot of more sense to you as it does to me and so let's get on with the testing now. We're going to start with the C70 uh, and we're going to then use the Climax and then the Heisler. Uh, and keep in mind that I actually did this a, a couple of days ago, uh, which is why this video is so late getting out. Uh, these updates came out and I saw that video with uh, Heist. So I decided that I should uh, talk about some of these updates and everything before doing the testing video and then we'll go ahead and, and do the track and repair the track and we can get on with uh, the Ramblin' Road Railroad. All right, here we go. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another awesome episode of the Railroads Online here at the Ramblin' Railroad. We are running tests again. You can see I just took those iron ore cars off. We're down here at the smelter and we are going to try the primary route to the iron ore mine. Now I took those off because combined weight, they weigh about 26,400 pounds. Empty. They are very heavy cars. So I took them off to, you know, try and make this as an easy run as possible. And we're going to start off here very soon with a very steep curve. I think that's like a 30% and it goes up like 5%. So I'm still kind of reeling from the from the last episode. You know, that was a major disappointment. I know that we have to redo that route that we derailed on. Eureka is probably not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, well, we got a lot of work ahead of us, but we got some testing to do. I'd like to see if we can at least get up to the iron ore mine with these cars so we can supply it. And if we can't supply it, then we need to reroute this route as well and make it better. 
coming down with iron ore cars isn't going to be a problem. It's all downhill. We don't barely have to climb anything. And we're chuffing down already. This is this is reminiscent of how Eureka did on this test. I think Eureka died right about here. Back before they re readjusted all the physics. Alright, well, well, we're not dead yet, but now we're close. You might notice, too, that the water level down here is actually climbing. Now, the way they readjusted the water is kind of weird. I don't know if I like it, and this this isn't going to work, guys. Even if it, we were able to go this, you know, without stopping... <laughs> Which we're gonna stop right now. Bummer. We're gonna slide down. The set breaks all we want. Well, will it pull us down? It might start pulling us down. So that's a huge disappointment. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm gonna back this guy down. Scoot your head a little more. I'm gonna clear this track, and we were clear out of the way. All right. Now, I didn't show it in the last video, and I said I ran, and that's not entirely accurate. I did do a lot of running in that last video, uh, but I did get stuck behind that mountain. I believe it's that one right there in the distance. Uh, and instead of running on the track all the way around, I just simply came here and I, I held down this respawn button. And that's going to take me right back to the freight depot. And that's what I did. Uh, I didn't do it the very first time I actually ran and about halfway there I was like why am I running I could easily be simply doing the respawn so that's what I did and that's when I ended up here and I came over here and we bought the Eureka after I got stuck behind this mountain <laughs> so I didn't actually run all the way over here so all right what are we gonna do we are going to buy Either the Climax with the tractive effort of 17,210 foot, foot pounds or the Heisler with 13,010. Now, I did a lot of research into what tractive effort is after that last uh, episode. And I, it's a, still kind of a mystery. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a physicist. I'm definitely not a mathematician. Uh, a lot of what I was reading was trying to figure out what the tractive effort is for the locomotive. Well, we know that number. That number is right here. What I need to know is how do I apply that to a train? And that's still a mystery to me. So but what I did learn was that the weight of the locomotive is huge to the tractive effort. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about it, we're putting pressure down with weight and that gets us our tractive effort. This one weighs 60, 61,870 pounds. This one only weighs 53,000 pounds. So you would think that this one would actually have less tractive effort, but it has more. So we're going to test them both. Uh, first off, we're going to close out of here and we are going to save. Save game. And we are going to go in and doesn't matter what we're going to be calling these. We're going to start with the Climax. Uh, let's see. We got options here. We do. That looks weird. That looks weird. I like that one. Headlight. We don't have an option. We'll order it. Doesn't matter about numbers or anything like that. Uh, we've got to get fire going, I'm sure. So, for those of you who don't know, this is a gear-driven theme locomotive. And the way it works... Where I'll talk about it while we're building some pressure here. So here's your steam cylinder right here. Steam comes in, pumps a piston back and forth, which drives a gear. It's just like a differential in or a transmission in your I'm trying to get see it. It's not letting me see it. It's right there. It's just like a transmission or a, or a differential in your vehicle. And it has a central drive shaft that runs your, your trucks, your drive tires. Now, they don't use the white... Uh, wheel system like they do with the other steam locomotives, the more conventional steam locomotives. So this is actually a little inaccurate. Oh. 
there. This is actually a little inaccurate. It's it's accurate enough for the game, but there is these are all drive wheels, right? So it it is what it is. I'm not going to get too wrapped around the axle about that. So these are very high torque, very low speed, but they can go straight up. And in I believe it was 1890 when the Heisler came out. Like I said in a few episodes back, I did a lot of research into the Heisler. Not so much this one. This one's a little bit older. I think it came out in the 1870s. Uh, they would climb very steep grades. We're talking like 10, 10% gradients, but they would do it very slowly. Um, and I believe they actually sped it up for the game. Maybe they slowed it back down again. I doubt it. Uh, I think a lot of people, if they're not rage quitting uh, because of the new physics, they're going to be rage quitting because these are the trains they have to use and they're incredibly slow. So with these long, beautiful routes, only the hardcore will survive. <laughs> so, <laughs> they got a lot of torque, they got a lot of power, um, and they, they can really haul a lot of weight up a very steep grade. But tractive effort is still a, a, a thing. So it's a trade-off. They're not fast, but they do climb. So hopefully we can get some work done with this guy or Heisler. All right, I just got the Climax hooked up to the train. We got the switches set. We'll reverse her forward, break off, start off nice and slow and gentle, take the slack out. All right. Not the fast, fastest locomotive, but it, it's pretty quick. I did have to break coming down that 3% coming down here. I didn't get sand, and I know that these gear trains these gear locomotives, they had an issue in game with uh, wheel slip, but I think they got that fixed. We're going to go 100% regular. See, I think I, that looks like wheel slip to me. But if we... I don't know. That looks like wheel slip to me. So maybe we need sand. Maybe sand will help out here. I'm not giving up on this one quite yet. And that was definitely operator error. You know, climbing a grade, making a turn, and sit there dinking with the regulator. That's not that's not very cool. All right, so we'll just stop right here. Plop down a sanding sanding tower. I know that these things got to be really close. This is going to be the sanding tower right here. G. Abilities. Sand house. That's got to be like... Right there. I can barely see that. 2x4, 2x6, whatever that is. Maybe. There's a ladder right here. We go up the ladder. Crouch down. Lift that open. That looks like it's full. <laughs> Probably is full. Lower that down. No idea where it's going. <laughs> Come on. To the to the that way. To the right. Come on. I want it's wanting to go left. There we go. Of course we're not close enough. <laughs> there we go. I'm putting some sand in there. It looks like it's full, though. It probably is. Of course, I'd never tried it, so... We'll let it go just for a little bit anyway. Put a little bit of sand in there, see if that's going to help with that wheel slip at all. Upsie daisy. That's probably enough. I don't think we're doing anything. 
Close that. I mean, no, I mean, sure if we can pass this. Huh. Yeah. Whoop. Well, that's going to be close, isn't it? All right, break off. Start going here. Yeah, we just hit it. All right, well, let's uh, get out. We'll just demolish it. I think that was a little too close. Turn the sander on. Give it a little bit more juice. Yeah, 100% regulator. That's a hard climb. It really is hard. You can see that sand working on that drive drive wheel there. Now these trees. I'm trying to I'm trying to pay attention to these wheels. It's doing it. This is a 6% right here with a curve at the top. You know what I didn't do? I'll stop up here. I didn't save it. <laughs> oh, I turned off the sand and we immediately started slipping. But we're on 0% here, so... This shouldn't be uh, an issue. All the trees, all the time. All right. We're going to bring it up to a stop here. Pop out. Hopefully that stops. All right, let's see how, how it does. Oh, you see that caboose back there? Didn't like that at all. Oh, still doesn't like it. Oh, there it goes. There goes that caboose. For whatever reason, that caboose went went for a ride. Oh well, we'll just continue on up without the caboose. It's strange that the caboose derailed and nothing else. Uh oh. Calamity Bridge is uh, giving this gear train a, a workout. I did let it slow down a little too much. I think we could have hit this bridge a little bit faster, get a little bit better run at it, and probably have done a little better. It looks like we're pulling it okay. 
Hopefully we don't run out of sand. We do have another steep climb. Oh, and I think I saved over my save file. I just realized that. I didn't want to save back there. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I'm going to have to explore my save files. That's not cool. That's not good at all. Because uh, I didn't want to end up with this one permanently, especially without any letters or numbers or anything like that on it. So I might need to revert back to the slot 2 save file and see what that looked like. Well, I guess we can turn the sander off now. Of course, we immediately start wheel slipping. Okay, here's that 6%. I've got some curves. To make it up this, I think we're going to be alright. I have no idea how much sand I have left. But it's doing a pretty good job. You know? I'm not. I'm pretty impressed. It's slow. But if it's doable, then it's doable. We have on here 11 cars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cars. 9? Did I count that right? <laughs> Uh-oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cars. Why did I think I had eleven? Huh. Oh, that's right. I was thinking the max length should be twelve cars. But we wanted eighteen um, beams. And that's eighteen beams, right? Three times six. Is 18 and we have 18 planks okay so I'm not losing my mind <laughs> I know I know I'm getting old but I'm not senile yet all right well we're gonna make it I mean it's all downhill from here so this the climax will do it yay that's awesome news so yeah it struggles but I think let's get off the regulator here oh that's so much quieter I gotta come back in here and thin out some more trees. I, it's one of my big pet peeves about this game is that the trees just get in the way of everything you're trying to view. So I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> Those trees. I gotta try and figure out my save game files and we'll get the Heisler and run this test again. So when we come back, hopefully I'll have everything straightened out and if not then we'll just have to figure it out and uh we'll go from there all right we're back it's been a little bit i had to do some editing of the save game file because we spent a bunch of money i saved it and we didn't want to save it so i had to go in and give myself back six thousand three hundred sixteen dollars but now we have this locomotive I lo loaded the game back up here, and as you can see, the train's actually disconnected. That's because this train pretty much went down on its own. A uh, coupler broke actually right behind this car here, and this whole train went down by itself. Pushing in reverse was very hard, going slow around some of those bends. This track up here isn't very smooth now. And part of the reason why we're getting a lot of derailments, especially slow going around curves, like we did in the last episode, and in this episode, when that caboose uh, broke free, was on that sharp bend right after that bridge. It's because that coupler length was uh, shortened from 11 centimeters to 4. So the slack is less, but that also means that the bending amount is less in here. And we're getting a lot of uh, issues with that with these curves. 
So no more really tight curves. And that means we might have to rework that. But we can go fast over it and it seems to be okay. Faster over it. It's when we go slow that it's a problem. So we can't have the climax. That's that's cheating. That's straight up cheating. So we need to demolish demolish it. Goodbye. And then we need to go back to the freight depot. All right, and just like that, we're back at the freight depot. Now, before we do anything, we need to come in here and save this game file. Now we're right back to where we started. Okay, so our next locomotive we wanted to test out was the Heisler. We'll go ahead and order that guy. Now, uh, let's take a look at some of the features first. You know, I do actually kind of... No. Eh. That doesn't matter. All right, we'll just order it. Okay, before I get too carried away, that is a bigger locomotive. It's a V configuration, very similar to the Climax. It's still ge geared, uh, if we can see in there. Strange how some places will let you like glitch through the train, other places it won't. So it's like a differential. And the last one I said it's like a transmission. Like it's accurate, but it's not accurate. It's it's a transmission in a way. What I was trying to get at was that it's geared like a differential. You you can't actually shift. It's not like your Honda Civic. You can't, you know, push the clutch in and shift into a different gear. That'd be nice, but that's not how these worked. It's one gear. And yeah, you know, they had forward and back, but that was just by opening and closing different valves in the in the cylinders. So we we did there's a dynamo right there, the dynamo generator, and I saw an air compressor right there. That's good, good, good. We'll get this guy warmed up, and we'll try that hill with him. All right. We're here with the Heisler, down here at the smelter. I just got it hooked up to this train, make sure that all the brakes are off. I went through and checked all the couplers and made sure that all the couplers were good. I gotta say, I kind of like the Heisler. It uh, it was pretty quick uh, for for what I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's, it's no Eureka, but it was pretty good, unloaded. Uh, it's... It was nice. It was actually a kind of a pleasant little locomotive to be driving around in. Little locomotive. Um, so we got all the switches set, I believe, and we're ready to start this test. But before we get going, just in case I make a mistake, we need to save the game under slot two, not slot one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that way, if I screw something up, uh, we can at least start all over again and and try not to screw up. All right, so we got reverser forward, brake off. This is a pretty nice cab too. I, I do like this train. Sounds like a two or three maybe. All right. Let's get going. We'll take up the slack here. We got lots of sand, I believe. I didn't test it, but we'll see. I'm sure we're going to need it. We'll try it without first. It's so cool seeing all that. All that mechanical is actually modeled, which is just super cool. I really do like that sort of thing in a game. This game is just... You know, a huge shout out to the developers for making such an awesome game. I mean, the visuals of the landscape alone are great. And then they go through the detailed locomotives and the and the rolling stock. Everything is just so well detailed and I just can't get over that. That's that's why I'm still playing this game, honestly. Alright, let's give her. I'm going to be watching these wheels. Now, supposedly, this has less tractive effort than the Climax. And what I'm seeing now is that this Heisler is just 
I mean, it's slowing down. But it's not... We're not spinning the wheels. I'm going to turn the sander on anyway, just for fun. <laughs> Huh. The climax is able to climb this hill. The Heisler is not being able to do it here. We're not. We're not over yet. I mean, we're still going. Hmm. This could be a problem. We're not stopped yet. It can. It can still go. Come on. Now we're stopped. And we're sliding backwards. Okay. Thander off. Brake on. And there we go. We're rolling down. Brake is set 100%. We got lots of brake it, brake pressure here. We're just going to be rolling down this. This is how, how these new physics are working here. Nothing we can really do except for running back and setting brakes. But by the time I got out of the cab and got to the first one here, we'd be down at the bottom of this hill. Let's just hope that we don't derail. This is where I ran into some issues with a climax trying to reset the save file. We'll just stroll on down here as slow as we can possibly go here, which we're doing all right. We'll get another run at this and we'll try it again. And plenty of steam. Everything looks looking good. Let's uh, let's back up a little ways here, so we can get a good run at it. That wasn't tractive effort. That was the power of the locomotive. We didn't start spinning out or or anything like that. We didn't lose traction. We just didn't have enough enough power to get up that hill. So, all right, let's go ahead and stop here. And what I'm going to do? Oh, come on, I'm gonna come all the way to a stop. All right, all the way to a stop. This is not. This is zero. So this is not on an incline or anything. And take the brake off. We start rolling backwards. Yeah, we're rolling backwards back here too. I don't think it's. I think it's at zero. <laughs> I could be wrong. Well, it, do, it doesn't matter. So let's. We'll just give it. Give it like that here. We'll get moving forward. As soon as I see this caboose start moving. We're going to give it all she's got. Here we go. The sound isn't matching the, the the ground speed here. Last run, I think we made it right up to this point here.
We made it a little bit further, I think. All right, now we're back to today. And so I think what we're gonna do is we are going to repair that track like I talked about at the beginning of the video. We're gonna make this run back here uh, up uh, derail hill better. We're going to fix that bridge. We are going to leave this bridge alone for now. Uh, and we'll see how it does when the time comes when we're pulling that hill with Beast. Um, I believe we are going to be buying the Climax, uh, which is the strongest uh, engine that we have in game to get up there to that iron ore mine. Uh, and but we might be running the C70 up there too. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll get there though. We got to fix a lot of track first. And it's going to de be dependent on how steep a gradient we can make it, how awesome it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to get to work on doing a lot of track repair and we're going to go from there. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button if you enjoy this content and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on another video. Uh, and you know, post in the comments uh, if you like this kind of content, if you don't like this kind of content. Um, let me know what you th what you think. Uh, I do read all your comments and uh, I respond to as many as I can, uh, given my, my time frame so that I have to do so. So, alrighty, have a good night. Thank you much.